Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? Ah, sir, how are you? Pleasure. Chindu. Hello. Have fun. Thank you. Pleasure. Let's go inside. See you here. Thank you. It's great. Tell us the story. How did it happen? Good Friday started like uh, a normal day for us. But this time around, it was a special day for us because of where we worship. We are Catholics. So on a day like that, we usually reenact the passion of Christ. And my phone rang. I said, yes, mommy. But Christopher answered. So it's the one calling. You know, mommy is written in pains. I said, pains? By the time I got home, the kind of pain I saw her in, or something I've never seen before. And I now drove with her to Luth. In anxiety, trying to at least get to the root of the matter, but when I had all this, I headed straight to the pool of doctors. When I got into the pool of the doctors, I wanted to drop it on the table, say, please, this is my wife's way. They said, no, 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 I should wait. I should take it to the ward and wait until they come on ward round. She, all this while, she was in pain. And at the end, they told me that it was ulcer. I said, ulcer? Can ulcer keep somebody in this kind of state, this persistent pain, all this while? They said, yes. And then they recommended drugs for me to go and buy. When I went to their pharmacy, of all the drugs that they recommended, the only thing they had in their pharmacy was the drip, the disinfectant and spirit, a box of uh, gloves and cotton wool. Gas call, but the other injection, they don't have it. So I had to go outside. The place we were kept, there was no light. So when it gets dark, the doctors could not see. It's my phone that I had to use, put on the touch light in my phone. That's what they were using to trace the vein. They punctured her body. In fact, at the point they went to the leg, there was no place they did not search. The first one tried, the second one tried until perhaps the more experienced one came before they could now get to where they can at least take blood and then give her injections from there. But I didn't know that they had a caveat in their ward that the patient's relation cannot stay in the ward with the patient. I never knew about that. They said, okay, oh unless you want to sack us, you must leave now, you must leave now. I said, they say, oh God, so I, I was literally pushed out of that place. I left and, and as I was going, my, my wife was saying, Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. I just wish I listened to that voice. I just wish I reacted to that voice. Because they made me go. And I left only for me to come back the next morning with Christabel to go and clean her. And then the curtain had been drawn on my wife's bed. As soon as I got halfway and saw it, life went out of me. The nurse now came and said, oh, God, please wait. I just shoved her aside, opened the curtain, and I saw the lifeless body of my wife with my first daughter. No information, no nothing, no phone call, nothing. They didn't do anything. And one of the things they said in their report is that they discovered my wife dead when they were going on ward round. Now, how can you put a patient under oxygen and there is nobody to monitor that patient. Perhaps the oxygen mask that they put on her was not working. Perhaps the gauge of the oxygen was not working. Perhaps there was no oxygen in the cylinder. <sighs> I feel so much pain. I feel so much vacuum. Because the kind of relationship I had with my wife was special. She was all and all. This is my children. She was always making sure. <laughs> I feel so much pain. So much pain.
as well. My prayer is that God gives you the grace to live through this because I cannot imagine, I can't imagine what you are going through right now. I have a daughter, she's 17, and I, I can't even imagine my daughter losing me for any reason. So, Sorry, God will give you for the strength to fight. The four of you, you have to make your father proud. Do you understand me? You have to do everything in your power to make sure that wherever your mom is right now, she's smiling. And make your auntie proud. Do you hear me? There must be a change. Things cannot be done this way. We are human beings, not animals. There is no life that is superior to the other. If some lives were cut short early, they may not have become what they are. A time has come when a medical revolution will start. My destiny, your destiny, is bound to the destiny of others. We need your support to make Ninja stronger.